थ्री टू वन सर वी आर लाइव नाउ गुड इवनिंग फ्रेंड्स दिस द सिक्सटीन एंड लास्ट बट वन स्टोरी on the second year of stories to tell and we have a wonderful topic today and a very learned and scholarly speaker dr prabhu s thakkar who is a bsc msc bed md and phd in remote sensing inputs for foreign management particularly in the polo forest he served for 37 years before he retired as a scientist in space application center isro ahmedabad he has to his credit pioneering work in country in uh, in the fields of archaeology urban development planning ornithology which is related to birds forest management of variety crop diseases all these using satellite remote sensing data and you'll be surprised that satellite remote sensing he largely learned on his own uh, because when he started there was not much information available in the country he has written a book on river vedic saraswati in gujarati he has worked in the fields of nature conservation nature education and adult education and also has contributed for ashtapad research for which he visited kailash mansarovar thrice uh, with support from new york jain center he is a recipient muted le ban on he is a uh, recipient uh, of shri aryom ashram prerit Uh, puranji paritoshik for social services acharya shri vijay vigyan shri award he has received lifetime achievement award from karuna trust palitana and atulya varso identity award from atulya varso historical and cultural center marquis who is who uh, which is a, of a world level also asia level has included him in the category of science and engineering for continuous 5 years which is a great honor at present he is honorary director for uh, center for climate change and clean development initiatives amdavad and he is also a member of advisory committee on river saraswati to government of india my friends we have a, a luminary in our presence i invite shri prabhu bhai uh, thakkar to give us uh, this story about satellite imaging and lost saraswati river prabhu bhai please unmute yourself and you can start your talk please thank you dr tejas nayak for introduction i should thank first dr tejas nayak for helping me in preparing this presentation he has helped me a lot now i will try to tell you about satellite then use of remote sensing data in various fields like environment and forestry and for lost river saraswati now i will divide my talk in three parts satellite and satellite data use of satellite data that is remote sensing data for archaeology environment and wildlife and lost river saraswati now what is that satellite any small object which rotates around a bigger object that small object is satellite of that big, bigger object now there are two types of satellite natural satellites that is earth moon and there are artificial satellites which we are launching that is in artificial satellite also we can divide in communication and satellite and remote sensing satellites now communication satellites are rotating around earth on equatorial orbit that is 36000 km away it is geostationary satellite it remains rotates at the earth is rotating so we can see this satellite on a one point only whereas remote sensing satellites are polar satellite that moves from rotates towards earth from north pole to south pole and the distance of this satellites are generally 500 to 800 km there are low earth orbit satellite also hmm. now these are communication satellite in set 1 in set 1b in set 1c g set 8 sample only now this is ir series satellites indian remote sensing satellites these are <coughs> remote sensing satellites now in remote sensing satellite also there are two types of satellites one is passive satellite and another is active satellite satellite which are dependent on sun 
for the energy to do photography are passive satellites. These satellites can work during daytime only when there is sunlight available. They cannot get images during night or during cloudy weather. Satellites which have their own source of energy, that is radar. This type of set and these satellites are not dependent, not dependent on our sun for energy and are called active satellites. These satellites can work during day and night and even during cloudy condition. Now this is Gujarat in natural color. This is satellite image from Modish satellite. All natural color that all green is vegetation in this image. Bluish is water, black is sea. And Narsarovar you can see near Ahmedabad. This is Ahmedabad. And left, lower left side, right side is there are, these are clouds. This is false color composite. All vegetation is red in this and water bodies are black. As this water absorbs total energy, it looks like black or bluish in color. Now, I will tell you about this capability of this satellite. Communication satellites are also working as remote sensing satellite. And remote sensing satellites uh, are doing that photography. Now, we can cover one third globe in a single frame, you can we can see one third globe on, in one frame. We can see at we get in, we can get information at continental level also. We can get information at national level also. We can get information at state level also. We can get information at district, taluka level, or city and village level also. This is Ahmedabad. You can see River Sabarmati. And this is Kankaria, this is Chandola, this is runway of Ahmedabad airport, this you can see railway line also here, and this is Vashna Barrier. Now, this we can see TV tower. Now, if we are looking from top, so head or any top, top of a tower, you can see only point. Now, TV tower is here. Now, we, this we can detect because of the shadow only. Now, using looking angle, local time, and high, length of the shadow, we can calculate this height of this TV tower also. Here, you can we can see birds. White dots are all flying birds. And black dots are shadow of these birds. Now, same way using lo local time, Look at, uh, local uh, time, look, look angle, and the distance in the shadow and this object. We can calculate the height of these flying birds also. Now we can see letters also. This is a factory near Bachao in Kutch. Here you can see Euro, E-U-R-O, and here also we can see Euro. Now we can get information about person standing. Now these are soldiers with rifles at Pokhran. Detection is possible due to the shadows only. Otherwise, person is standing here, white dot. But you can see the shadow of a soldier and gun on the shoulder of the army men or BSF men. Now we can even detect moving boat also. Here you can see boat. And behind you can see these waves. This is jetty. Now, same way we can see aeroplane, shadow of the plane when they are flying at low height and trail behind this. This photograph is of the, that of Vidya BOP that is in Great Nanapach on Pakistan border. Now, I will discuss use of satellite data for archaeological sites. I was a project manager for grassland mapping project in Saurashtra and Kutch, Gujarat. And I detected some shapes. Here you can see this circle. There is one 
square like structure here. This is Landsat satellite data. And this is merged data. You can see this bigger square here. Now, when I visited this place, generally we go to uh, field for ground verification, grass type, grass name, agriculture type. Now, I found that there was, there was a wall made up of, of stones, but there was no cementing material in this. This uh, stones were cut in and near the corners and they were fixed with each other. Now, same way near in Surendranagar district near Lakhtar, I found some rectangle structure here. And when I visited, I found bricks here. So I thought that we can detect archaeological sites using satellite data. I discussed with my division head, my group director, my deputy director and director, but they were not ready to believe that we can detect archaeological site or buried cities or buried towns or buried forts under the earth. So I ordered some data of some well-known excavated site like Mohenjo-Daro, Harappa, Lumbini, Sravasti. And you can see here the ruins of Mohenjo-Daro. And you can see River Indus or Sindhu here. And you can, we can see this river here also. That It shows that river was flowing earlier at this, in this course. Now it has changed its course. Now this is Harappa. There is granary here. Go downs. We can see clear cut three lines. This is Lumbini in Nepal. We can see rectangle structure and circular structure inside and roads here. Same way, this is semi-lunar structure, Ardha Chandraka. This is picture of Sravasti or Sahet Mahet, capital city of love, elder son of Lord Rama. This is triangular, you can see triangular structure here. This is Ahichatra archaeological site, uh, dated back to 1100 to 1300 BC. This is Nalanda. Plus mark, we can see here, 600 BC dating. Now, if we can draw some line here, some line here, some here, and some here, then we can say that it was a swastik shape. Or if you connect this all from all sides, then we can say it is square structure. If we are not connecting anything, or we are seeing this as plus mark, then also it is like a chopper, where the game we were playing in the past. Now this is Kalinga, dated back to 400 BC near Bhuvneswar. We can see square structure here. This is Bhuvneswar, this is airport, and this is river. Now I looked uh, data in Great Run of Kutch. Now Great Run of Kutch and Little Run of Kutch were part of sea. And in this area, when it was under water, there's, we can't expect any site. But I found few sites in Great Run of Kutch also. This is Potli Dharamsala in Kori Creek. This is underwater. We can see clear cut this Potli Dharamsala. And when I referred old maps, it was written that Potli Dharamsala was a village or town. Now, this data is of 26 January 2001 of both earthquake date. I found some river-like structure. And here we, I found some square or rectangle structure. So I thought that must be something. Now we prepared a paper and presented at NIO Goa regarding River Saraswati and a city underwater in Gulf of Kembe. After this, you can see this river-like structure and this structure here. Here you can see rectangle, or we can see here rectangle. So after our presentation, NIOT surveyed, surveyed using sonar, and they found that structure like this. So it was confirmed that there was a town buried underwater in the Gulf of Kambi. 
they found some artifacts from this site and this age goes back to 32,000 to 9,000 years BP. This is Surkotada site in Kutch. This was excavated by Dr. J.P. Joshi before Dolavira. And bones of horse have found from this place. Here we can see this fortified structure and this safe L safe gate. Now they, they were using L safe gate to reduce the force of elephants or horses. And uh, bones of horse have been found from this site, Surkotada in Gujarat. Now there is one more site on the road of Boj to Nakhatrana. This Vadimedi was known as archaeological site and Pumarasar temple was known as archaeological site. But this big site, rectangle site, it was not known to even director archaeology or archaeology department. When I saw this picture to them and we visited this place, we found this site on ground and there are different objects we found on that in that area. Here also there is L safe gate. Now this has referred in Bezetir of Kutch, but it is mentioned in different village. So people were not able to locate this site. Only local people who were using this bullock cart or going to fields, they were knowing that there is some site here. Now this is Dolavira in Kutch. You can, we can see square structure. Outside these are all water reservoirs. Now from this side, we have found reservoirs outside reservoirs here, and there is we found a we means archaeology department found a board having ten letters. It shows that Harappans were literate people, not illiterate. Now, I detected one more site that is probable Dwarka near Girna. We can see here outside water body, then we can see some structure, square structure inside and smaller structure inside. This smaller structure inside is Barwala village. Balwala means Balram or Balwan, Krishna. And I said this is probable site of Dwarka near Girnar in Jamnagar district. I found pottery from this place. We, there were cementing material used, lime as uh, in this wall, and outer side is Vokro or trench there. Here it is archaeological site Lothal. This archaeological museum is here and we can see Dokyad here. After this, my work in archaeology, ISRO headquarter published an NNRMS bulletin that was special on archaeology to train the archaeologist or to show this that this remonstrating data can be used in the field of archaeology also. Now I will discuss something, some few slides, three or four, for forest use of remonstrating data for forestry, environment, and wildlife. Now this is uh, Sanjay Gandhi National Park, that is Borivali National Park near Bombay. There was encroachment, and according to forest department, this encroachment was only in 51 hectare. But using satellite data, when we mapped the, prepared this map, we found that the, the encroachment was 751.44 hectare. The land, was, land value was 37,000 crores in the year 1995. We presented these maps in Bombay High Court and we won the case. I was the signatory authority, authentic case, and I did sign there in the court to authenticate these maps. Now we can use this data for any protected area of wildlife habitat. This is Gir Forest area. We can prepare base maps. Now here in 1990 data, you can see red, like red area is more than 30%. Now this is forest fire. 
Now, we were using this data and preparing maps and informing PCCF Gujarat, Principal Chief Conservator of Forest Gujarat and Authority of Gir Forest at Junagad also. Then they tried to control the fire. And you can see this 1998 map. There are only one or two or three forest patches, forest fire patches. Now, this is Flamingo City here. Flamingo City is in Great Run of Kutch, the traditional breeding ground of Greater Flamingo and Lesser Flamingo. We can use this data to study this ornithology or birds also. This is Flamingo City on ground. This is photograph of Flamingo City. When we visited, there were 6,000 to 7,000 adults, 12,000 to 14,000 juveniles. There were 9,000 nests and 4,000 eggs on the nest. And this is Sanatha Lake. This is archaeological site. You can see octagonal lake. This is near Ahmedabad. Generally, we can see trees are green. All surrounding trees are green. But here we can see that the trees are white. So I thought there must be some birds. And when I visited, I found that Hironari, that Pendistor breeding colony was there. Now this is Somnath Lake. This is also archaeological site, you can say circular lake. Now here also vegetation is green in surrounding area, but here inside you can see there is white. So when I visited, there were birds there. So we can detect bird colony, hironaries, or breeding sites on trees using this data. Now I will discuss something about lost Saraswati River. Now, Vedic literature is full of references to river Saraswati. She is referred as Naditama, meaning the widest and strongest river flowing among all the other rivers, with the other rivers. Now, Prabhaskand of Skand Puran has given detailed description about river Vedic Saraswati. But at present, there is no such mighty or strong flowing river Saraswati in India. It is disappeared or lost somewhere. Now, today, most of the scholars, geographers, historians, geologists, geophysicists, archaeologists, and space scientists of India and at international level working for Vedic River Saraswati believe that the Gagar was the River Vedic Saraswati. There are many books published. You can see this, this is only sample. Now, Saraswati Mahatma Kanku by a widow of a divan from Bhuj, Mahara. She published using Shruti and Smruti. She was listening from my Mahan. She was remembering and then she was writing. This book was published in 1886. Now in Gujarat, there is one more book by K.B. Dave that is Saraswati Puran. Now two more books were published by Avi Pandya and Lost Saraswati by Indras in 1967 from Vallabh Vidyanagar. Arubai Vaje, through Baba Sahib Baptist Smarak Samiti, Bangalore, published a river Vedic Saraswati, Sod and Bodh, in 14 different languages. Dr. Kalyan Raman has also published a voluminous work on river Saraswati. There is one center of excellence working for the river Vedic Saraswati at Kurukshetra in Haryana. A group led by Sri Moropan Pingle and Dr. V. S. Vakankar traveled on foot along the course from Adbadri in Haryana through Rajasthan to Prabhas Patan in Gujarat. Now, Saraswati River was the one mentioned by earliest record of Saraswati River, that is by a commander, General Sir Cunningham, that is in 1846 to 1848. Albaruni, during the period 1973-1048, he reported a riverbed full of stones as River Saraswati. This has referred in Archaeological Survey of India, Volume 14, that was published in 1887. Now, I have written a book on Vedic River Saraswati, Sod Tatha Bodh. It was published by Baba Sahib Baptist Manak Samiti, Bangalore, Saraswati Nadi Sons and Gujarat, and Media Society Gujarat. I think there were three different courses of River Saraswati during three different periods. That is Vedic period, post-Vedic period, 
and the and mahabharat period then post vedic period that is a historical period from 2000 to 1000 years before and fourth one is at present course of river saraswati in uttarakhand haryana and gujarat in gujarat there are two courses we have seen earlier now i will dis discuss about this four different courses that is vedic post vedic mahabharat period post vedic historic period and medieval and modern period now modern day there is one river saraswati from uh, mana pass coming up to mana village and up to 3 km south of mana village and it is meeting at vishnu prayag to this alaknanda now in haryana there is one river saraswati originating near adubadri or adibadri and flows near kurukshetra in gujarat we can say there are two saraswati rivers one is in north gujarat originating from koteswar near abu and meeting the ending in, in the later run of kutch there are three rivers known as kumarika banas rupen and saraswati in north gujarat saraswati other saraswati river is gir saraswati which originates in gir forest and ends up near veravad and meets arabian sea near triveni sangam there are there is triveni sangam means there are three rivers meeting the sea we can see here hiran one so one course kapila is another course and saraswati you see ટક્કર સાહેબ આપનો નેટવર્ક બરાબર છે બંધ થઈ ગયો છે અવાજ what have been sir an issue yeah the presenter has lost the connectivity so, okay બાકી છે તમારે સાહેબ શેર સ્ક્રીન કરો હાજી પણ ઉપર થોડો જતા રહો હજી થોડી સ્લાઈડ હું કહું ત્યાં સુધી અમે સાંભળી નથી 
बस अहिया आता छेले ओके सर हाँ जी प्लीज प्रोसीड नाउ प्रोफेसर यशपाल एंड हिज टीम पब्लिश्ड ए पेपर इन 1990 एंड दे शो दैट दिस रिवर वाज ओरिजिनेटिंग फ्रॉम शिवालिक एंड एंडिंग इन थर्ड डेजर्ट इन पाकिस्तान नियर मेरठ एंड बेरीवान बट आई वाज नोइंग अबाउट दिस कुमारिका एंड टू रिवर्स इन गुजरात सो एंड आई हैड रिफर्ड दिस अर्लियर लिटरेचर आल्सो सो आई वाज नॉट कन्विंस्ड एंड आई स्टार्टेड डूइंग माय वर्क ऑन माय ओन now i will discuss first late vedic period mahabharata now i referred a book that is ancient bharat wars written and that was published in 1949 from andhra pradesh vikas visakhapatnam in that map it was shown that river saraswati was coming up to nabi sir post in that is pakistan bop border out post to the north of khadi so i tried looking this satellite data now one more river satlaj also was coming to gujarat now this is from lohrana uh, book by haru bai thakkar now we can see the river saraswati here earlier it was earlier map this andhra pradesh map was showing at khadir and this map shows that saraswati river was coming at near vigopur so i Older data of great run of catch at one is to fifty thousand scale, forty l to proceed, and I found that there is some paleochannel like structure, and this forty bed structure on this. Now this data is of that of twenty six January Bojar Square time date. Now here you can see this. This, this is pre cambrian rock maruda tucker and river is coming here now this paleo channel water sprang up in this old paleo channel this channel was 100 km in length and 80 m in width now this river was coming up to khadir and here also we took profile and we found that this sediments show the date of 1600 years before present now there was one well near narveri border outpost when i visited this area i saw air bubbles in that well so i discussed with see this thing with dr sk gupta of prl and we visited that area and we collected sample and we analyzed the data age of that water was 89000 years to 12000 years bp using radon now one more site it is in pori creek i found some structure structure square structure in padla creek of that meeting to pori creek now i thought that is some fortified structure but people were not ready to believe that so i visited with the help of bsf and i found that this was fault you can see this burj outside but one burj is to inside see same now it is possible that uploading and down, uh, downloading from boats or steamers might be from this place now this is underwater in kore creek near pakistan border we visited this area with dr navin jual from prl and mahesh dr mahesh thakkar from kash university these jawans are from a crocodile commando and one fisher local fisherman was with us also now guru nanak went to makkah madina from this port that is bassa bandar by boat north where now this is this is साहब अपना नेटवर्क में कहीं प्रॉब्लम छे हजी ठक्कर साहब
चालू कर we took profile from this area and found that this dated this was dated back to 1600 to 800 bp that is iron age site this is an iron age site now one more site we have discussed this thing i visited twice this site this is maruda takkal this is probable archaeological site of iron age also now one more site we karim kajika karai to the south of bigokot and we found coins from this we can see here base of houses and students were collecting artifacts from this site now this is one more site in karim sai uh, from karim sala to bigokot there is one karim sai border outpost to the south west of karim sai bop i detected one site and visited this site and we worked with prl scientist and other scientist and took profile here also it site goes 5000 to 3000 before present now to the north of this karim sai border outpost that is bawarla bet border outpost where we took profile and we found that that it was dated back to 19000 years now from karim sai we found this copper head pin coins bangles nandi and pottery now saraswati nadi shodh sansthan provided fund for this study and kutch university dug a borewell to the south of bigokot on a paleo channel this uh, site goes back to 10000 to 9500 years before present at the depth of 40 meter now sediments pattern found same as kalibangan to the south of bigokot and this is kalibangan in rajasthan and river saraswati we can see here now here kagar river we can see in the map and saraswati river here you can see it that it shows that gagar was different and saraswati was different now all archaeological sites we found on vedic river saraswati in rajasthan also there was a course of river saraswati which was near churu that disappeared and local people believe that it has gone to multan this is published in book of om sharma on churu saraswati nadi sosan san is also working on that course now boat drive map i found from that ancient bharatvars i overlaid that map on google earth and i found that this river is coming from himalaya to haryana to rajasthan and it was coming up to kutch now post vedic that is mahabharat period we can not find any mention of ganga in vedic literature on can find mention of ganga river only once or twice river vedic saraswati might have disappeared 
or diverted the course of it. In this period must be that of Chakravarti, King Sagar. Now, King Sagar might have tried to bring water of any other new river or Ganga as the river Saraswati might have disappeared. The king could not find a solution to bring the new river to the region of present day India and he died. The sons of Sagar mapped the earth to a unit of one square yojana, that is eight multiplied by eight square kilometer and started digging each unit. They dug in the south, they moved towards scoop, scooping out the western side up to Mount Saumanas, that is Balda Dungar in Saurashtra. They went towards the north direction, continuing their digging activity. In the north, the Sagara sons then continued to the northeast direction up to snow-clad area near Mount Kailas. Now, Saga sage Kapila told Ansuman that only his yet unborn grandson, Bhagirath, could bring the Ganga down from Swarga. After the death of King Sagar, Ansuman, Dilip, and his son Bhagirath continued the same work. Now, work of Ganga Avtaran or Ganga Nayan was started by Ansuman. His son Dilip also spent his life for that work, and Bhagiratha was successful in bringing the Ganga down on earth from Swarga with the help of Lord Shankar, the 11th Rudra. We can see in picture Ganga is coming from Swarga to the hairs or head of Shankar. Now we have seen that Bhagirat brought Ganga from Swarga with the help from Lord Shiva. We cannot believe it scientifically and say that it is my myth or mythology, but it is not mythology. It is 100% true. That is Satology, science of truth. Recently in California, there was a, a atmospheric river which created havoc. That was on January 4, 2023 and March, in the month of March, 2023. It poured more than 30 trillion gallons of water and there was havoc in California. So there might be atmospheric river which was brought by Lord Pagiratha with the help of Lord Shankar. There is sentence in Ganga Arti that Krupa Drashti Tumari Tribhuvan Sukhdata. Here Tribhuvan is Tibet where Bindu Sarovar is located and origin of Ganga is from Bindu Sarovar. Now, this is from Encyclopedia World Geography by E. Bloomfield. It refers that, it says that Ganges called in the Indus Ganga rises in the kingdom of Tibet, entering Hindustan about the 38th degree of latitude. It runs first southward in the cities of Bikaner, Minapur, Halbas, Banaras, and Patna, Rajmahal where it divides into branches and meets Bay of Bengal. Now this shows the river Vedic Saraswati was coming from northeast to of Mansarovar and Kailas and it enters India. Now in satellite data also we can see that there is, there is one Kapal Sarovar near Kailas. River is originating from this it is coming in Mansarovar, Rakshastal, and that river goes from Adibadri to Manapas. Now, in some literature, there is mention of even Kapal Sarovar also. Now, you can, we can see this river coming from this place to Manapas. Now, it is mentioned in our Sastras that our main rivers were originating from mouths of animals like lion, horse, elephant, cow, peacock, etc. Nobody can believe this also, but satellite images show mouths of such animals and origin of different rivers from those mouths and confirms our literature. This, we can see this mouth of a cow, mouth of a horse, mouth of an elephant. Now, Sindhu was originating from a mouth of lion. Now here, there is one more lake in between this Bangla Ring show and Kailas. You can see this face of this origin of Sindhu is from this face of lion. Now, this river was coming to Adibadri and coming to Manapas. This is known as Mangnang Sangpo. Now, Sangpo is Brahmaputra towards east, and this Mangnang Sangpo is coming to this side up to Manapas. 
Now from Manapas, we have seen that the Saraswati river is coming up to Mana village. There is Saraswati Mata temple, Vyas Kupa and Ganesh Kupa also. Now this source river Saraswati near Mana. I have visited Kailash Mansarot thrice, 2006, 2007 and 2009 for Ashtapad and for the river Vedic Saraswati. Now this course was from Gangla Ring so to up to Manapas and from Manapas to in Uttarakhand, then Uttar Pradesh, Haryana, Rajasthan, and it was coming to Gujarat up to Prabhas Kshetra. This was known as Vishnu Ganga or River Saraswati as it was brought by Bhagirath after Saraswati disappeared. So people might have known this river as Saraswati also. Now Vedic River Saraswati, we found out from our literature that the river Vedic Saraswati was originating from Mount Meru and was meeting the Arabian Sea in Gujarat. Now I found this map of Bharatvarsha. Bharatvarsha was four petal lotus shape and Mount Meru was in the center. So river Saraswati, Vedic river Saraswati might be origin, originating from Mount Meru. Now this is Jambudvipa as per the Jain literature. We speak while resolution making or doing Shankar. Jambu Dvipe, Bharat Khande, Bharat Varse in day to day life. We also remember Saraswati river with other rivers when we are taking bath. Now there is one site in Iran showing Hindu calendar or Sanatan calendar, Behistone or Bistone, archaeological site in Iran, showing Sanatan Hindu calendar. It shows sun and moon seven days a week, fortnight, 30 days a month, moon year, solar year additional month after every, every third moon year to compensate with solar year. Now we Indians were spread all over the Jambudvipa or Bharat Varsa. There was no Aryan invasion at all. We are losers. We have lost our different regions and the now restricted in present day India only. This shows Jambudvipa that is Afro Eurasia, Europe, Africa, Europe and Asia, Afro Eurasia. Now there is one map published in book that is Kingdom of King Bindusa. This was a state of under one king only from Gujarat to Sikyang and uh, Kyrgyzstan. It shows that there might be a river and this area was under one ruler. Now there is one Kutch and Sikyang also. This is landlocked. You can see like safe like Kutch only. There were there were eight towns which were buried under desert that may be due to tectonic activities or eruption like volcano eruption like Toba eruption. Uh, Suryavansi king Ikshwaku performed first Aswamegh Yagya on the bank of river Saraswati, known as Sita also. This is Sita river flows in Sikyang or Xinjiang. There are Ramban and Sitavan also in this region. Sikyang is located here and India is here. So river might be coming from this through Jammu and Kashmir. It is mentioned in Vishnu Puran that people were living in North Kuru present-day North Siberia. To provide knowledge to those people, a self-learned person, Suryavansi, named Agnidev, created Rukveda. A self-learned person named Aditya created Samveda to the south of Siberia. A self-learned person, Vayudeva, created Yajurveda in Ketuman, Russia. One group of people came to Gandhar in present-day Afghanistan. To provide knowledge of Vedic culture, a self-learned person named Agnid Angira Dev created Atharva Veda in this region. Thus, all four Vedas were created in Central Asia. Now, this is Pamir, not from where river Saraswati might be originating from Meru. This is Kumarika River. It is flowing in the mountainous region. There is reference that Saraswati was the river of mountain area. 
Now the, this is, you can see Kumarika River. It is in Sikyan. Thus the course of river Vedic Saraswati might be originating from Central Asia, that is Meru or Pira, Pamir and coming through Sikyan to Jammu and Kashmir to Haryana and Rajasthan and it was meeting the Arabian Sea. Now there is one Burjaum site near Srinagar. It is a Neolithic site. From this, we have found evidence of tree finding of human skull have found from this Neolithic site. This shows advanced knowledge of medical field in the past. This site is a unique storyteller of the life between 3000 to 1000 BC. Now, there is one more site, Megal Mehergad. It goes back to 8,500 years to 6,000 BC in Baluchistan, to the north west of Indus River. And Saraswati was also to the north, to the west of Indus River. Now, tectonic activities in Pamir, Hindukus region, as well in Sankos, Suchar zone, may be responsible for disappearing the river courses or changing in the course. According to geological studies, Himalaya is rising at the rate of four centimeter per year, which might have affected the course of various rivers during different periods. Now, this shows course of Vedic River Saraswati. This shows post Vedic River Saraswati. This shows historic River Saraswati. And this shows early historic Saraswati, which was coming to the north of Khadir. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. This is overwhelming knowledge. Almost none of it uh, we uh, knew. And uh, this is a real scholarly work. Uh, I would really uh, congratulate you because most of it is your work. Uh, you have originated uh, the early satellite imagery, helped it develop in Gujarat, India, and done so much work besides forestry on archaeology, uh, uh, wildlife, and particularly Saraswati River. I don't think any one of us knew that uh, Saraswati River was that important or that Saraswati River have alternative routes. Uh, so ultimately, do we uh, 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 conclude that there was not one Saraswati, but multiple, but they did not coexist, means they existed one after the other. So in those periods, there was only one Saraswati at a time. Am I right about that, sir? Yes, sir. Okay. And the last one also you have shown in the last uh, uh, map. Uh, if you can go up and show that map again, uh, it would again be uh, clear to all of us uh, that these are the roots of Saraswati. And uh, which was the oldest, sir? Vedic. Oldest is Vedic. Then next? Pre-Arapan, then? Post-Vedic. Post-Vedic. Then, then historic. Then historical and then early historical. Uh, no, then early historic and then historic. History. Wonderful, sir. Thank you very much. I uh, leave this uh, talk open for discussion. Uh, I invite friends to raise your hand, uh, unmute yourself, and ask questions. Yeah, Tejas Bhai, I have a question. Uh, sir, you explained or you uh, put in a hypothesis that this is, there are four uh, uh, roots of this Saraswati River. But how can we prove it? We have to, I have shown archaeological sites. Mehargad is oldest site in the that even Vigokot goes 10,000 to 9,500 years BC. And Vigokot goes uh, up to 1,600 or so. There was no uh, archaeological site in India or Gujarat that is of in Iron Age. This site is we have discussed discovered first with the help of IIT Kharagpur, uh, Pune Deccan College, PRL, and uh, Kutch University, Geology Department. No, sir, but you mean no, the, the sites would have developed uh, beside rivers only? Uh, the, uh, at, to the left bank or right bank, near rivers only. Our all cultures are developed along the different rivers only. 
so you mean that uh, like uh, along the path of river you identified some uh, stones or something like that which were of uh, different uh, age and from based on that you say that this was probably the path of uh, this river we, we, we sir using satellite data we can see paleo channels uh, sir aapne uh, paleo channel word bahut repeatedly use kare hai for sir, us you will have to explain paleo channels are archaeologically lost rivers which have left traces please explain it uh, now see paleo channels we can map also i was lucky that i had i was in charge of map library and satellite data library also and i had a lab there were many projectors optical reflecting projector and very very many enlargers also so i used that satellite data and i used those instruments also i worked this afternoon uh, after leaving office after office hours only and was working up to 12 night in space application center when i was showing this paleo channels some geologists were there we can't see like this but using this instruments you can enlarge this data even i have used epidioscope to enlarge the maps also and match these features uh, we made trenches in greater of kutch in different areas and we took profile and using osl method optical uh, osl method uh, optical uh, i don't remember s what is yes. for s it is luminance last is luminance so this was this work was done in prn so this work is not only mine sir so, so uh, can we uh, ask this that okay you have proven that there were rivers in ancient times uh, prehistoric times also but how do we know they were called saraswati all of them sir i explained that vedic saraswati was yeah so it comes from the, some scriptures some writing from, from, from literature theory. also okay so origin, original vedic saraswati was originating from meru parvat and meru parvat is in central asia okay. it is known as kailash also yeah, as you have shown here north of k2 which is k2 okay. now in pakistan ha okay. Huh. okay now that ganga avtaran ganga nayan was from kailash mansarovar Yeah, that which is the lowest, uh, the, the maroon color. So river. after disappearing, this original Vedic Saraswati, he brought Ganga from Kailash Mansarovar, uh, with the help of Lord Sang Shiva or Sangka. Yeah. So the so that was the second Saraswati. Second. Then third river, I show you map also that it was coming to Khadir. Okay. Green one. Fourth river also, I have shown you map and. Uh, there are archaeological sites like kalibangan vigo court kanjar court kaji ka karai okay we, we made trenches there also and we have dated those uh, sediments so is it a frequent thing of uh, like uh, the river are lost or like it is only uh, exceptional thing for the river saraswati No, no, sir. Hundreds. Hey, many rivers have cha have changed their course. Some rivers were flowing towards south. They started to flowing towards north. In Gujarat also, Hiran near Jammu Goda, it was flowing towards south. Now it is flowing towards north. Same with Chambal, it was flowing towards south. Now it is flowing towards north. Even people say that there were rivers. Amu Darya and Sir Darya. Sir Darya is Saraswati only, but Amu Darya was Sindhu. It started flowing towards north from uh, Meru. Okay, wonderful, sir. Wonderful, uh, friends. Anybody else who is curious to ask anything? We are all so overwhelmed with the new topics, sir, that we can't uh, even find questions for you. Uh, yeah, Meena, come here. Just share something. uh having taught history and geography for so many years uh the most of the common one was of the gagar and uh, how the river flows and how it disappeared yes. and of course the vedic chants and all of that so we i think what we came to know in history books is the vedic period and how it disappeared 
right in the middle of nowhere, the Saraswati River disappeared. Uh, so uh, how is it that, you know, we don't know of all of this? I mean, the, Sanjeev Sanyal's book, The Land of the Seven Rivers, and he talks of the Saptas Hindu, and then he talks about Saraswati as part, but nowhere is there a mention of Saraswati. So that is a very intriguing, uh, you know. Can you repeat, sir? I, uh, there was some problem in this, my connection. No, no, I was just, uh, I was just talking about how in the textbooks, it just says that the Saraswati River disappeared because of, uh, you know, fault lines and uh, thereby because of some uh, natural, uh, there were some climatic changes and that's why it disappeared and uh, uh, there was no other reason uh, for it. No, no, no. I told you that volcano eruption like Toba. Toba created, that, that was in 72,000 years before. Same way, Earlier, there must be a tectonic activity in Hindu Kush, or even today, Himalaya is rising. So, there are um, this tectonic activities. This year, four centimeter per year. So, it is bound to the, the there that rivers might may change their courses. Now, Sindhi, uh, Sindhu River, Kali Sindhi MP. Parvati in MP, even Narmada, Albaruni has written that Yamuna was coming up to Baroda. And if we see literature, and there is one more site near Kheda, in Kheda district, there is one temple that is Mahisagar and uh, Gulf of Cambay is meeting. There is one temple also there. There is story of marriage of this river and she attended this site it is written there and it is written that thus this river was bringing black water so she was not ready to accept her then she started filling the sea and then she was feared and he came she came to meet the river mahi Verakhadi site is there. That was wonderful. I think so yeah. much detail okay. about so, this. Uh, we have, uh, if there are no questions, we have reached the end of our discussion. A wonderful story, very knowledgeable, and from the mouth of a great scholar. Thank you so much, uh, Thakkar Sahib. Uh, Thank you, sir, my you. friends. Uh, next week, just after one week, we will have our 17th and the last uh, story because uh, our year finishes on 9th. And that is why we will catch uh, the next Thursday. Uh, so you will be informed about our last and 17th story for the second year of Stories to Tell. Good night, my friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you.